Alrighty, welcome back. We are here at day two of SFMA 2022, and we are joined by um, a, now a familiar face to the <laughs> channel, uh, John Klinsman and Dr. Goatley, and we're going to be talking crew culture and what goes hand in hand with that mentorship, as uh, Dr. Goatley is one of Mr. Klinsman's uh, favorite mentors here. So <laughs> you didn't like when I called you Mr. No, Klinsman. <laughs> So um, we talked a little bit about, you know, recruiting efforts here this week. We've talked about labor shortages and maybe some strategic solutions for the for that. We've talked about inspiring the next generation. Um, and, you know, what better position you have than, you know, having the students right when they come into the industry. So, you know, how have you really benefited from them, learning from them as, you know, a new wave of students are always coming in. And what are you hopeful for with this next class of turf professionals? Well, I, I agree with you, but people think that the learning comes from our end and it truly is a two-way street mm -hmm. because I will contend that I learn so much more from my students after it's all said and done. And even in the classroom because of their experiences and uh, being a, a professor, I, I tell people uh, doctor is what's used because that's commonplace, but I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm not an MD, I'm a mm -hmm. professor. And when I see guys like John and my students, they've got skills already that I don't have. And I'm constantly picking their questions about how do you program that irrigation controller? How do you fix that electrical pair? You know anything about plumbing? Those aren't things that I do, but I can train them in the science of yep. the soils and the plants and give them the basis to go and then going out and do much bigger things than I'm ever going to do. And that's, that's the way I look at being a mentor and being a teacher. Definitely. And, and you guys met here at STMA, and I've been lucky enough to hear the story um, that you were, you know, raving about this book that you just picked up and how excited you were to read it. And then um, someone's wife said, oh, well, do you want to meet the author? And it just happened to be your wife <laughs> yes. who, who made that introduction. And what better way to just, like, break the ice and make that connection and then you to continue that connection and learn from each other. So, John, talk a little bit about, um, you know, the role that Dr. Goatley has had in your career. Well, you know, we, we spoke with Trotter and Brownlee yesterday, and they were more inter, in, instrumental, um, easy for me to say, in my career as we've progressed. But mm -hmm. early on, it was Dr. Goatley who kept me interested in, in this, you know, and kept me excited. And um, we would meet up every year, and he would just love to hear about the progression of the career. And, you know, and it, it went from zero to 60 really quick. You know, the, the year I met him, I was an assistant. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next year I was the head of grounds at the same school, you know, so it, it went really fast, but he's, um, he kept me excited mm -hmm. during that, during that stretch. And, um, it was, I think I told you on the phone, it's like meeting a superhero because yep. it's, it's this guy that's <laughs> wrote a book about how we do what we do. And then you get to meet him. Yep. That's so cool. And you talked about just like, you know, needing to keep that excitement alive when, when things are starting out with any career, it can be daunting and, you know, any interview process is not fun, but that's something that, um, you know, as a mentor now, you have the opportunity with your crew, um, with the people that, you know, come in and want to see the facility to really get them excited. And how do you effectively do that? First, it takes somebody that wants to do it. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not going to get, um, you're not going to get anything out of somebody that doesn't want to be there. So first, you have to find the right person. And then it's figuring out what excites them about it. Mm -hmm. So if it's, um, you know, if you've got a guy that likes doing the dirt work, you, you, en you encourage him with the dirt work. Or if it's somebody that wants to mow, you're making sure they're mowing paint. Whatever it is, you're trying to encourage them with what drives them. Mm -hmm. Now, there's going um, to be times when they don't get to do what they want to do. But hopefully you've built up enough credibility with what you've done with mm -hmm. them that they enjoy it. And I'm getting the opportunity now to kind of pay it forward to one of Dr. Goatley's former students. Um, awesome. He took a job in Nashville. And, um, you know, my the first thing I did when I found out was email Dr. Goatley to say, hey, I, I want to make sure he's okay here. And um, getting that opportunity, and that's that's a pretty good feeling at this point. Oh, definitely. And that's just the, the nature of this industry is just, you know, sharing that wealth of knowledge, mentoring, and... You know, we've done something unique in the past several years where we're going for to mentor even younger and younger um, 
future turf professionals. And I know you had a session with Andrew Miller of the Brentsville Turf Program. T tell us a little bit about, you know, anything that came out of that session that could have us hopeful for, you know, our next class that we could possibly recruit here. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a session that left me, I'm getting goosebumps now thinking about it because you go to great sessions and there's not a bad one in the bunch, but I left that one feeling, you know, it's like, let's go, let's go do this. Yeah. And it came from the passion that was displayed by the instructors, the teachers, uh, because we had two great instructors up there and then some of Drew's, the kids mm -hmm. that came up and um, so professional at such an age. I can't imagine getting in front of a group and delivering a professional presentation, you know, as a high school, sophomore, junior, even a senior and, and the energy that they had. And uh, I don't think that most of them will probably go on to become sports field managers, mm -hmm. but I don't think that's a bad thing because mm -hmm. The things that these programs are doing is they're educating and they now appreciate what this industry is all about yeah. and they're going to want the best or someday for their kids yep. to play on and i think it just continues to deliver on down the road 100 percent, and just the visibility no matter where it comes from for you know turf managers is going to be you know those kids could have kids down the line and tell them to consider it as a career or you know what have you um but were there any other, like, recruiting elements that you guys spoke about that, you know, people could consider as an option, maybe a different pool to consider, or just an effective way to really bring visibility to a sports field manager? The school systems are, they're so uniquely set up to attract students mm -hmm. because you've got grounds, you've got athletic fields. And that's what our presenters yesterday really keyed in on. Uh, look at the opportunities that are there. Um, STEM, which we are constantly talking, yep. science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and then you add the ag component to it. This is agriculture, and you can't, it's hard to recruit an urban student to ag. It's like, yep. oh, I don't farm. And I was like, well, this is farming at a different level, but the science that's involved, the equipment that's out there, and then most of these kids also appreciate to some level sports and Here's a way to stay in the game if you're Definitely. not on the field and contribute back to do it. To me, that was uh, a little survey that we did. That was probably one of the more surprising things is why are kids attracted to these programs? I had assumed as a scientist, not much of one, but as a scientist, it would be the STEM component. Yep. And it was mostly about their appreciation for the games or sports that they played yep. and their, what they'd heard about the other students and the instructor to say. And always an angle to promote. I mean, it's a great way to brand the industry, your way to stay in the game. And I think the new tagline is where the game begins. It really does begin yep. with turf professionals. Um, so, and I think something unique about the turf industry as a mentor is you constantly get to see what your mentee is providing to the industry. There's that final product at the end of the week. Um, and, you know, for other professions that may not ring true as much, like if someone leaves your mentorship or leaves the position with you, they might go on and post a few things on LinkedIn once a year. But with, with our industry, it's like every week your mentee is putting their product on display and in some way you get to take credit for it. <laughs> That's right. And, and what, you know, that John is in us meeting a few years ago and staying in touch and John very quickly figured out, hey, that's just a pretty ordinary dude, which is for me as an academic, that's how I'd like people to look yeah. at me. Um, he is also figured out, he's got the passion, but he's also figuring out the balance between his job and his family. Yeah. And that's part of what we've got to consider as well. And, you know, when I see someone say there's a successful person, mm -hmm. that's another part of it. Of course. And that leads me to another great question. Just a lot of conversation about making this a more sustainable option for people um, so that they can start a family and can kind of have that work-life balance. Do you guys have any advice on that front on how that's something to, you know, achievable? Learn to say no. Mm -hmm. Know your boundaries and just say no. They're not going to like it. You're, but if you, if you set the expectation early in your career, wherever yep. you are, that you can't do that, yep. then it'll be okay. Well, and I'm sure, like, even hearing that as, like, a younger professional, I'm like, well, you know, when you first start out, you, you, we've been told forever you say yes to everything. It doesn't matter. You do the extra time. So what are some ways that, like, you know, kids entering the industry right away or right out of college, what's some ways that they can feel empowered to really, 
you know, be accountable of their life and, and say no if, it's, if they're ever faced with that situation? It's, I don't know that there is an answer. Yeah. <clears throat> I think a lot of that is personality dependent. And some yeah. people have a strong personality uh, and, and will feel empowered to simply express that. And others are going to be more, we, John and I were just talking about, what's my biggest weakness? My wife would tell you, you can't say no. And yeah. to this day, I struggle. So I think personalities will apply, but it's going to be, to me, continue, continuing emphasis on communication yep. and letting your bosses know, here's what's going on. Don't clam up. Don't tell them if you have issues. And if all you are is a complainer, they'll figure that out pretty quickly. But if yep. you're a good worker and you want to discuss things like that, if you've got a good line of communication, most of these things will tend to work themselves out. Definitely. I've been successful with the communication end of it, um, just keeping my bosses in the know when they mm -hmm. need to be in the know. I don't ask to do a lot. Yep. I just go do it. But when I need something, they know he's coming to me for a reason, whether it be time off, whatever it, you know, whatever it is. Um, so communication, building your brand is extremely important. Um, if you're building your brand in front of your employer, then they're going to realize your value. Mm -hmm. So they will, they're, they're more they're more willing to help you with what you need outside of work at the same time. 100%. And building a brand, I think I told my boss, like, on the first interview, I asked him what the maternity policy was, so he knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I built that brand right from the get-go. Like, Smart move. You need to expect that. <laughs> Set expectations. Yep, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, this has been great, and I appreciate both of you guys for joining us. Is there any, any final thoughts or anything that you've seen come out of this week that you'd want someone who didn't have the opportunity to attend this year to know? This is the, I enjoy all of my meetings, but I especially enjoy the friendships that have been developed over the years that, I was getting ready to say STMA, but SFMA yeah. now. And I would tell anyone that hasn't come, this is one that you need to come to, and especially, obviously, if you're in the sports turf industry, but there are so many people here that you're going to meet that you're going to carry on these relationships for years in the future. You guys are a testament to that. Wonderful. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much again. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you.